rather than starting completely from scratch, it can be useful to take inspiration from somewhere. And so when I'm doing this, uh, color is typically where I'll start. So if you think about color, there are different places that we can look for inspiration. Uh, the National Park Services actually has a really fun hashtag uh, on Twitter, and I would imagine it's on Instagram as well, uh, but where people take pictures of different national parks and then pull color palettes out of those. So you can find these from the hashtag NPS color forecasting. And so here's a palette inspired by this photo of the Badlands. Or there's a whole series, this is one of them, uh, from the Lewis and Clark Trail. Right? So you can see just colors have been pulled out of these images in a way. And because they're inspired by nature, they sort of naturally go together. Uh, here's a few of them. Now, I've actually always really been drawn to this Arches color palette down on the bottom left and have been waiting for an opportunity to use it. So today is that opportunity. I'll share it with you here soon. Another place to potentially look for colors that work well together, Google has an arts experiment. Uh, you see the URL down at the bottom there, where you can cycle through and you can either start with color and then be served up art uh, in the color spectrum, or you can shuffle through art and then find color palettes that are drawn from it. So just in terms of finding a starting point, right, versus really starting a blank slate can be a useful thing to do. Another resource I'll mention, uh, and Alex, I'll kick it to you here in a moment to say more, but is the Adobe Color Tool. This actually isn't one that I've used before, but that Alex recommended sharing. Alex, how have you used this one? So very similar to what you mentioned earlier, but sometimes I'll take a brand's logo and I'll just upload it to this tool. And it's pretty nice because you can play around with some preset themes and it'll pick out color combinations for you based on the theme. So you can say moody or bright and it'll try and pick out different combinations. And then it gives you all the codes that you can easily add into your tool. And if you're not sure what I mean by codes, uh, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But the idea is that it picks that color palette just like Cole mentioned with the pictures. Awesome. Yeah. And once you've found your inspiration, so whether it's an image or Alex mentioned a logo, there are different tools you can use that will pull the colors out of it for you. Uh, so here's one of those, a color palette generator. So I uh, found an image here of one of the national park inspired color palettes, and you just put in the URL, which you can see at the right there. And then it pulls out both a muted scheme that you see on the left and then a brighter version on the right uh, with the hex codes that go along with those. Uh, so it turns out arches, which is the theme that I wanted to use. I couldn't find a good online image that was just this. I've taken this from that uh, visual we saw earlier that had a bunch of different ones on it. And so I could have saved it as an image somewhere online so that I could have used the color generator. But rather than do that, I wanted to walk you through another way that you can identify colors for use uh, in, case that, in case you find it useful. So this is one of those tools that uh, before you know it exists, life can be sort of difficult. And then once you know it exists, you use it all of the time. And that is the color eyedropper. I'm going to show it here in PowerPoint, but it's in many different tools that you would use where you would need to be setting colors. I can take my image here and often I'll start by just drawing some blank boxes. Uh, so you can see I've added five gray boxes just below the image. And then I can select one of those boxes and say that I want to change the fill color. And so here I can go to more fill colors. And then it brings up a color window. And the very important tool there is the eyedropper. That if I select that, I can actually mouse over anywhere on my screen. Right? It could be on my desktop, or here I might hover over the image and the color that I want to pick up. And then when I select that, it'll bring up the details of that specific color. So now here, the hex color is usually what I'll use because I find it easier to copy and paste to remember a single string of uh, digits versus uh, three if you're doing RGB. And so now I can take that hex color and note it. 
so that I can use it later. And then we'll see momentarily how I'm going to do that. So I can go through that same process for each of those different colors and basically use it to create my own color palette that now I can make use of. So I can do that manually in the way that I just did. I can systematize it by uh, setting those colors in PowerPoint or any tool where you're routinely adding colors to something will have a way that you can do this. Where I go into my color details, and you can see actually what's selected right now is the office default. Actually, if we look above that, you can see the storytelling with data color template that we use. But rather than select any of that, and there are some preset ones here that I can choose from as well. If I go into customize colors, then a screen comes up that shows me how the various colors are uh, designated currently. And now I can go in and change any one of those. And actually, it turned out in doing this uh, that once you get into one of these colors, so when you click on the little box, you can use the eyedropper directly. So I actually didn't have to go through the step of writing out all the hex codes ahead of time, but still thought I'd show that in case it's useful. So now I can put in all of my colors. There are some extra ones, so I grabbed a couple others just from the picture, and then I name it my arches theme. And like that... PowerPoint generates uh, lighter and darker uh, intensities to go along with the hues that I've just chosen. So that bar along the top shows, or the first row there under theme shows the colors that I just input, and then it gives me some different options. And invariably, some will be like crazy bright or uh, ones that you may want to steer, steer away from or modify a little bit. But this gives me a good starting point to then be able to have a theme color that goes beyond uh, you know, what the default would be in my given tool.